Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you three easy ways to improve your landings. And the first is this. A perfect landing starts with a perfect traffic pattern. How can we expect to have a perfect landing when one time we're tight on the down and the next time we're wide, which screws up our base, which screws up our final? A perfect landing starts with a perfect traffic pattern. But to understand that, you need to see a downwind that's a little bit too close and a downwind that's a little bit too far. So a perfect landing starts with a perfect pattern. Look what a wide pattern looks like. Can you see the runway kind of way out there? Can you, if you're looking from your seat, can you see how it kind of moves up the window? We're flying what I call like a bomber pattern, right? I want to always put myself, how do I know if I'm too wide in a pattern? I want to always put myself in a position. If I lost my engine, can I still make that runway out there? And the answer right now in today's conditions is no. If I, I'd be maybe on airport property, but that might even be a stretch because I'm so far out here. I'm too wide in this case. I want to fly a more normal pattern somewhere in the middle there. So this time I'm too tight on the down. Can you see the runway here? Can you see how short my base is going to be when I try to make this turn? A perfect landing starts with a perfect traffic pattern. How can I expect it to be good when I'm all over the place like this? I'm not even going to have a base in this case when you're looking down here with this. I might as well just bring the power back and make it a short approach for, for as close as I am to this. In a high wing airplane, where do you want that runway on the down one, on the strut? In a low wing airplane, where do you want to see the runway on the lead or trailing? edge of that wing. That's what you have to work on and burn that sight picture of a perfect pattern and the distance on downwind into your mind. So now that we're flying the perfect pattern, it's important to know and understand that airspeed is king. Like I said, we have to fly that perfect pattern. How can we expect a perfect landing when the pattern's all over the place? How can we expect a perfect landing when the airspeed's all over the place, knowing our numbers? What happens if you come in a little bit too fast? What happens if you come in a little bit too slow? Let's head up to the cockpit and find out. So this time I'm gonna do something that's a little bit hard for me here, which is coming in too slow. About 70 to 75 out here on base. I'm, so I'm a little bit high though, which again, is just the instinct in you. Like I wanna, I wanna have a little bit of safety net here. I've got the power on back and Williston traffic to the Mike Zulu's turning final for five at Williston. Airspeed is king, right? I don't want to be getting slow this far out. I'm purposely keeping the nose coming down, obviously. But I should be nailing my airspeeds. I should, let's say for my airplane, I could be 90 on downwind, 80 on base, 70 on final, slow into 60 on short, short final, and make those approaches. Again, are you in miles per hour? Are you in knots? Those numbers may or may not work for your aircraft. You have to realize that. That's just what, what, I'm, what I'm sharing here with you. All right, so coming on in here again. Trying to come in too slow, coming in, holding 70 at this case here, getting a little bit slower here. Coming on in, everything's looking good, looking good. And I'm holding it off here, trying to get a little bit slower here. Power's back. Slow, slow, slow. Coming on down, and see how sloppy the controls are really getting when we're coming in this slow in this case? Slow into 60, slow in here, and eventually I have to do with that dirty word we're going to talk about here in a bit, which is flare, which is back on that yoke as we come in so slow, and we're holding it off there. We have to be careful when we come in slow. We can end up slamming it on in and stalling on short final in that case. Just something else to be mindful of. You're going to hear me say this again and again throughout this video. Airspeed is king. I'm a little bit high. I've only got, I'm going to just give it 10 degrees of flaps here. I'm on base for five here, about to turn final. And Williston traffic to do Mike Zulu's turning final, runway five, full stop, Williston. I'm a little bit high. I'm a little bit fast. I'm going about 90 right now, and I'm still a little bit high. I need to get down. I'm not going to add any more flaps. I just want to show you how important something like airspeed, and I'll bring it in close. I'll make this realistic. I'm not going to come across at 110 across the numbers here. I'm going to bring the power back. I'm just thinking, you know, what would I do to slow down, right? We're thinking all these things, right? So they're bringing power back. They're doing all these things, but, and then they look and they go, they're too high. So where do you put the nose? You're trying to put the nose down, but what am I going to do? I'm going to pick up a ton of airspeed if I do that. Instead, I can bring the power back and bring it down. But either way, again, I'm going to purposefully come in too fast. I'm just going to come in at 90. 
I'm going to hold 90 and show you really, between 85 and 90, to, to really show you what that does to our land. In this case, I'm 85 right now. I've got 10 degrees of flaps. I'm basically on glide path here. Coming in again, 85. Looking good here. To show you what that float looks like in this case, I've actually slowed to about 80 now in this case. It's hard for me to fly uh, fast in this case, but e even so, using that as an example here, coming in fast here, let's come in at 80 across the numbers here. There we are, I'm at 80, I'm across the numbers here, and let's watch what it does. If I was trying to touch down that five, there goes five, first center line stripe, second center line stripe, third center line stripe, fourth, I'm, I'm at 70 right now, thousand foot marks. I'm at 65, I'm at 60, and I touch down right here at 60, about 13, 14, almost 1,500 feet down that runway. Airspeed is king. You're coming too fast, you're going to float. The airplane was still flying plenty, even at 65 when I was in ground effect like that. Keep that in mind. And lastly, I want you to lose the word flare from your vocabulary. The space shuttle, when it came into land, it would flare. A triple seven coming into land flares. A Cessna 172, a Cirrus SR20, a Cherokee 140, doesn't flare, it transitions. That's what really happens. Allow me to show you a flare followed by a proper transition landing. You've heard I don't like to use the word flare, by the way. Instead, I like to use the word transition. 747 come in to land flares. The space shuttle, back when it would fly, it would come in for landing, it would flare. But 172 doesn't necessarily flare. Allow me to show you why. It's because we lose such a sight picture in this case. Let me show you why here. We're coming on in. Looks like a normal landing. We're coming in, we're at 70, slowing about 65. Everything's looking great here. We're coming in, I'm bringing the power back. Down we come, down we come, and all of a sudden I just keep pulling back, and back, and back. Stall warning horns on, I can't even see where it is. Could you even see the runway in that case? Could you hear the stall warning horn? Could you see how abruptly we came down? And when that airplane stopped flying, she stopped flying, even though we were at about 10, 15 feet. That was basically a controlled stall just about on the way on down. 172's General Aviation Aircraft instead, we transition in that case, and that's what I'm gonna show you next. If a perfect landing starts with a perfect pattern, what does that perfect pattern look like? It's that perfect rectangle. It's a downwind at the right distance, not too far away, not too close, where if I lost my engine, I could always make it back to that runway. It's maintaining my appropriate altitude on my downwind. These are the things I'm focusing on, and it's managing my airspeed as well, about 90 on my downwind, right where I want to be here. Maintain everything. A beam my touchdown point. My carburetor heat comes on. I bring my power back. I'm within 110, so I give it my first notch of flaps. Flaps have a tendency to make the nose come up, so I'm using poor man's autopilot, a little bit of trim here, to go ahead and get that airplane on down, bring a little bit more power back to make sure I actually started a set down here in this case and fly this out again to my 45 degree point in this case. I can still descend and maintain 90 in this case. It's all about pitch and power management in this case. I'm just about ready to turn my base. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Williston traffic, two through Mike Zulu's turn left base, runway five, full stop Williston. Making sure I'm keeping the nose coming down the turn. Just because I brought power back there doesn't mean I can't touch it ever again. I'm still bringing a little bit of power back here as I'm coming on in. Looking good as I'm turning my base here. And coming out, wings level in this case. And slowing the airplane on down. Just adjust a little pitch. I'll give it another notch of flaps here. Just a bit. It is a kind of a gusty day today, so I'll probably land with between 20 or 30 degrees of flaps in this case. But I'm about 85 right now on a wide base. That's okay. Or on an early base, that's okay. As I get a little bit closer here, getting ready to turn final. I'm going to give it my next notch of flaps right before I make that turn. I'm not a big fan of flaps in a turn. Verify that final is clear. I've slowed the airplane now down to 80 here. I'm going to go ahead and turn final. Wilson traffic, 2-3 Mike Zulu's turning final, runway 5, full stop Williston. Everything is looking good here. 
holding 80 through this turn, yet keeping the nose coming down, keeping that airplane flying here. I'm looking at a point in the runway. I'm looking at, I want to touch down like the beginning of the first center line stripe. So to do that, I'm looking at like the number five, the beginning of the number five here. I might be a little bit high, so I'm not adjusting my pitch because I'll pick up airspeed. Instead, I'm taking out a little bit of power. I'm giving it my next and final notch of flaps here as I'm coming in, slowing to 75, and just getting progressively a little bit slower, making these little adjustments. My eyes are looking at five, my eyes are looking at my airspeed indicator. 75 is that airspeed there. Get blown around a little bit, but nothing we can't handle here. 75 still my airspeed, but slowing towards 70 now as we now cross these trees and come onto airport property, slowing down. Everything still looking great. My eyes are looking at that number five here. I'm at 70 now as I'm coming on in here. Things are looking good. I'm putting that center line in this seat on my chest. If you're in the left seat, you're gonna put it on your right shoulder in this case. I'm down to about 65 here, coming across, almost runway threshold. Power smoothly back to idle because that runway is made here in this case. 60 coming across that threshold here. Holding it back, transitioning, taking my eyes down that runway, holding it off, holding it off. There's the stall warning horn right before we touch down. A nice, smooth, full stall landing and a little bit of aerodynamic braking. Three easy ways to improve your landings. You have those in your flight bag of tricks now. Enjoy the rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see ya. As my Christmas present to you, I'm giving away all my books for free. If you become a member or currently a member from December 18th, 2017 to January 31st, 2018, I'm going to give you all my books for free in ebook format. Pass your private pilot check right, pass your instrument pilot check right, including a sneak preview of pass your commercial pilot check right, still in its uncut kind of rough draft so you all can see it before it gets typeset and get a pre released version of that. The Secret to Perfect Land is the far aim in plain English, so many of our great books you've grown to love, they're going to be yours free. It's about a two, almost $300 value if you're a member of any level from those dates, December 18th, 2017 to January 31st, 2018. You have access to all that. We'll get you those books, become a member, partake in some of the great webinars we're doing. Visit groundschoolacademy.com to hop in there and become a member today.